Hi, thanks for joining me again. Almost every technical principle has an equal and opposite principle, a mirror image opposite if you like. Last time we looked at springs. A spring is a successful test of previous support. And here we have price testing previous support. Previous support is here. And rejecting a breakdown, and instead rebounding off that support and accelerating higher. Now, if I turn this little chart upside down, we have the mirror image opposite. Instead of testing support, price is now testing resistance. Price moves up and finds resistance, it then turns back down and then comes back up to make a secondary challenge to the resistance above. And here we have a little upthrust of the previous resistance and a failure to overcome that resistance and price then breaks down. This little push above the resistance is termed an upthrust and an upthrust is what we're going to look at this week. Now the upthrust is a little difficult in some respects because there's two different types of upthrusts we need to consider when we're doing technical analysis. This type I'm showing here is a Wyckoff upthrust and it's the upthrust of a level of resistance, of a price level, of a resistance level. Whereas Tom Williams developed VSA, volume spread analysis, and his upthrust was actually the shape of a bar it looks something like this. This is an upthrust in VSA. You can see here prices accelerated higher, but supply has come in and it's closed poorly at the low of the bar with the next bar lower. You can see here on this chart prices accelerated higher. It's adjacent to previous selling. This was price accelerating higher. A period of consolidation or attempted consolidation through here. Price has come back up but it's up thrusted and if you notice it was on relatively high volume. This type of up thrust isn't so dangerous on low volumes but when it's on higher volumes you should sit up and take notice. This is a VSA style up thrust whereas this is a Wyckoff style upthrust. One is the shape of an individual bar, the other is a challenge and failure to overcome resistance at a certain price level. It's a little unfortunate that both had the same name, but that's the difference between the two. We'll look at some more examples. It doesn't have to be an actual pivot high. You can see here this is the this is price up thrusting the breakdown. Price has come up and failed at this level. This was a serious bar. If you see one like this, which initially goes a little higher and then breaks completely down. There has been a close off the off the low so there was an attempt to support the market up to here but you can see the next day tried to continue back higher probably the true believers sticking with the stock but they were unable to get the upper hand price then continued lower and once it broke below the low of this bar it was unlikely to hold on it continued trying to hold on to here 
I've drawn a line across. This is the new breakdown bar. And price has come back up and attempted to challenge that line and recover the lost ground. But it's ended up to be a failure. And this would be termed price up thrusting the breakdown line. This is the breakdown line. This is the breakdown bar. Price has come back up challenged the breakdown line, failed to overcome the resistance, and prices in, in turn broken down. Some real world examples. You can see here, this is the Australian dollar futures market. If you draw a line across this high, price has gone through a series of little up thrusts of the previous high. You can see that price came up initially, found resistance at this level, it's come back down and gone through a period of consolidation. Then it's made another challenge to the line above, or to the level above, and there's a series a little up thrust of the line, but at no point did price ever look like it was going to successfully get above that level. You can see every close was back below the line, what I call the shadow of the line. Price has pushed up and then been forced back and closed below the line. Price then pushes lower in response. There's a secondary attempt to come higher and then price breaks down again. This is Adelaide Brighton Cement, a little mini up thrust. You can see price has pushed up to here. Found a little bit of supply coming in. Price has come back and recovered. Come up to make a secondary challenge. Up thrusted the previous high, which is here, and price has failed. US dollar index, futures, daily. Here's where price found resistance previously. A little up thrust of the line and price has failed. When price has broken back below that line and shown an inability to recover, it was likely to head lower and it did. It didn't mean it was going to 100%. But when it failed to recover the lost ground and showed that it couldn't get back above this level where price broke down, because this is the previous support, it was unlikely to recover. Uh, light crude futures again. This is a Up thrust of the breakdown line, price had been, well, there's a interesting one. There's a VSA style up thrust on what looks like pretty high volume. There's the volume there. So there's the other principle I was talking about, it's a VSA style up thrust. And it is an upthrust of this high too. Uh, price broke down. It tried to recover here, but wasn't able to get back above this this level. Price has broken down a second time. It's come up to challenge the secondary breakdown line, and it's upthrusted that line, and it wasn't able to recover. This was a good place to go short or here and price continued lower. No guarantees each time it will work 100%, but once the breakdown occurs, it's more than likely, the probabilities are in your favor that price was going to break down at these points. And you see here, we've marked the next breakdown line, and price didn't even get close to challenging the break, this next breakdown line. That was just showing you that the market really was seriously weak. 
and it was going to keep going lower at least for a, another period of time. Here's the next breakdown here and a little up thrust of that level. And PLS, a ASX stock with a series of VSA style up thrusts. Now this was definitely supply coming in over here and price broke down. Once price broke below the low of this bar, you know that it wasn't going to, wasn't going to be successful at consolidating and price was going to roll over and move down. You see it moved down from here, it's come back up and then it's formed a VSA style up thrust. And then price is broken down from that level. The element have support have come back in again. Price has moved sideways. You can see it continues to produce a series of little up thrusts where price was showing that whenever there was some sort of recovery trying to take place, the sellers were moving in and absorbing the buyer's demand, which formed these poorly closing bars, bars that were at the highs of little pivots and they closed nearer the low than the high of their trading range for the day. And you can see that prices eventually been forced lower by this ongoing selling pressure. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. You can see the different types of bar produced. We'll just run through them quickly again. This was the Aussie dollar. Up thrusting a previous high. This was Adelaide Brighton Cement. Up thrusting a little minor previous high. The US dollar index daily. Up thrusting a previous high. Light crude. Up thrusting a breakdown line with a VSA style up thrust in the background. And finally, Pilbara mineral, Minerals with a whole series of VSA style up thrusts. With weakness in the background. The VSA style up thrust is not a primary form of weakness unless it's on very high volume. It's generally a secondary or confirming indicator of weakness. It confirms previous weakness in a market unless it's on very, very high volume where it then becomes the primary form of weakness in itself. Uh, this style is confirming that there was weakness here and it's ongoing. It continues to cause difficulties in the market. So it confirms that weakness and it lets you know that it's probably going to be ongoing for at least a period of time longer. And you can choose what to do with your position if you're in the market at the time. Okay, thank you very much again. See ya.